Welcome back boys and girls and this is for the hunters who are really interested in what 330 feather can do to a deer. And some of you might be thinking, why is David putting up two videos for each hunt? This is why. When I first started the YouTube, I really wanted to share everything on my hunt so that we could all learn from each other. But since my channel got monetized, they were blocking a lot of my videos. Even though it's a small money, it just kind of got to me. So there were some times where I actually kept everything PG rated. But more I thought about it, I thought it wasn't fair for other hunters. And it really wasn't the goal that I started with. So I decided to make a two version. One is PG rated and the second one is commercial free hunter rated. So if you're not a hunter or if you have a weak stomach, you should stop right here and watch PG rated, not hunter rated. Sometimes it takes hours before the deer shows up. And if you don't stay vigilant to your surroundings, it could pass you without you even knowing it. Now I actually saw the deer passing through this wood here back here. So if I wasn't looking around, I would have completely missed it. Matt! Now if you watch how this deer reacted after he got hit, you know he was almost dead before he hit the ground. And once he hit the ground, he was only acting up his running reflex. So again, 330 Federal is a very humane kill. That's the least we can do for our deer. And as Hannah, I truly believe this is really important. Matt! Matt! One of my viewers asked me to do a review on my hunting knives and I couldn't do the review without actually showing how it works so I'm gonna do the review today. First I have a Gerber bear knife and I had this knife probably for more than 10 years and now let's use a knife that has a serrated blade here so I can actually cut through the breastbone and have the whole front open so I have access to every organ when I'm field dressing and sometimes it only takes me like a minute. I'm never parting with this knife. And then I have a Gerber hook knife. You know what this is. Now this is gonna open up there like a zipper. And then I have this thick white brownie hunting knife. I had this for about 16 years, maybe about 15 years. Now this is a great when you're processing deer at home. In this white blade, you could put the back of the knife into the skin and then you could open up a hide without cutting any meat. This also opens like a zipper. And if you watch very carefully, I put a notch for each day I process with this knife. Over the 15 or 16 years, I have 190 notches. That's how many days I processed for my family. You want to cut out the torso gland and the back legs with males and that's going to reduce a lot of musty smell. You only want to put a small incision without actually puncturing it until you see the red abdominal muscle. And then you should finger to puncture through the abdominal muscle. This way you're not going to puncture any intestines. And now you could use your hook knife to unzip the abdominal wall. Here you want to use your left hand to push in the stomach and put a serrated blade against the breastbone. 
And then once you have it, use two hands to crack open the sternum. Now between the thorax and abdominal cavity, there's a thin muscle called diaphragm. You want to cut that and release the organs. And here, with your left hand, you want to reach in deep, grab the esophagus and trachea or windpipe, and pull it down and cut it as high as you can. And you can pull out all the organs in the thorax. And right here, there are some attachments in front of the tenderloin. So you want to carefully cut the attachment without cutting your tenderloins. Now we're gonna cut the other diaphragm muscle and it's almost done. The heart was hit perfectly on the upper half, so this heart doesn't even have any aorals, meaning this deer didn't know what hit him, which also translates to very humane kill. <sighs> it was another hard shot. No heart for us today. It's got both lungs. <sighs> oh. Luckily the liver is intact. Okay, as expected, it's another perfect hard shot. Both long shot, not even a half is left. But luckily the liver is intact, so I'm gonna take that with me. I feel the rest is so fast, you could see the muscles still twitching. I'm having a problem with my tennis elbow, so I'm gonna get some help from my son, come back to drag him out. Okay, here's my deer. Now, usually, when you have to leave the deer for a little while, you wanna crack the ribs open. Well, this is good to do it every time and put a piece of branch inside so that it's kind of cool off really quick and leave it in the shade. I actually had this deer in the shade of this tree here, but sun's move and it's in the sun right now, but I'm sure it was in the shade for a good time, so we're good. My son was enjoying his weekend and sleeping in. But when I called him with my elbow problem, he complained just a little bit, but he really has a true concern for me and he was more than happy to help me out. After all, he loved venison. Yeah, that's a big bug. Okay, when you drag the deer out, as you know, lean forward as much as you can and just take a step at a time.
Okay, take your time, Joseph. Again, thank you, Joseph. Okay, even though this is not a really big mature bug, it is a good size bug. This is the entrance cell, and you can see it in here, it's got a big old hole again. 330 is really devastating. But the exit hole, because it was shooting at an angle, it just went through the ribs. Not an impressive hole, but it's got a good size hole there. And lastly, like always, thank God for what you have, enjoy life with what you got, but mostly remember, hunting is never easy and it's not always fun, but I'm always grateful. See ya.